If only, I hear you say, if only Mr. Brittus had been here, this disaster would never have happened. Very possibly not, but the day may come when I'm not here at all. Let's just spend a moment thinking about that, shall we? <laughs> OK. Can we think about it a bit longer, Mr. Brittus? <laughs> now, a brief word about basic safety techniques. The golden rule is Linda. Um... I'll remind you, shall I? On seeing a potential hazard, we think about it, don't we? We identify the problems, then we tell the rest of the team. Think, identify, tell. Tit. Pardon? I said tit, Mr. Brittis. Timothy... It's a mnemonic, Mr. Brittis. What? Think, identify, tell. T-I-T. -T. Tit. I'm so sorry I'm late, Mr. Brittis. I've had a bit of trouble finding a fire extinguisher. If you remember, we lost three that time they took off your trousers and sprayed foam all over your... Stop right there. <laughs> What's he done wrong, everyone? We did all promise not to mention the Rotary Club, didn't we? Gavin, I'm talking about the fact that he's not wearing a safety hat. He can't come in here without a hat, Colin. You're right, Mr. Brittis. I'm sorry. Are you going to be very much longer? Mr. Donaldson. I've got eight men waiting out there to come in and start work. There you are, Colin. You're holding up Mr. Donaldson now. All because Colin's not wearing a hat. <laughs> Linda, go and get Colin a hat, please. I'll bring it back in a minute. <laughs> ah, thank you, Mr. Donaldson. Colin? Thank you, Mr. Brutus. You may now enter the room. Has he done wrong? Anyone? Could you give him the answer to this one, Mr. Brittas? We've lost nearly an hour already. <laughs> He's left a fire extinguisher in the middle of the room. Goodness me, so I have. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where we want it, Cole. Out of harm's way. <laughs> safety, Colin. We must think safety. Hi, Carol. Carol? It's all right, darling. Mummy's coming. Oh, Michael. Welcome to it Radio Television. How can I help you? I was wondering if Gordon was back. Oh, yes, he's upstairs, so you should be safe if you keep to the ground floor. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I wanted to see him. Oh, well, I'll just fill you out a visitor security pass then. Oh, Ben. I've told you before about playing with Mummy's things. Are you okay, Carol? I'm sorry, Michael. It's just Jessica's got another ear infection and I haven't had any sleep for three nights. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What with that and my birthday? It's your birthday? Was. Yesterday. I had no idea. Nobody did. No presents, cards? One. From Ben. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, poo head. <laughs> Buy him an air rifle, you see. This is terrible, Carol. You leave it with me. Just as soon as I've seen Gordon, I'm going to do something about this. Oh, for goodness sake, Ben, turn it down. There are other people trying to sleep in these doors, you know. <laughs> Come in. What do you want? And good morning to you, Gordon. I said, what do you want? I've come for a job. You what? I'd like to work here, Gordon. I don't know if anyone's ever explained to you, Mr. Farrell, but if you had a job, you might be expected to do a day's work. Look, I know that... And you wouldn't recognise a day's work if it jumped out of your Cayman Islands bank account and turned into a pair of silk pyjamas. I just want a job, Gordon. I'm afraid there's nothing available. <laughs> well, that's not what it says here. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to change both you and the world you live in. Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre seeks new junior pool attendant. You can't have that position. Why not? You're an American. <laughs> Married to a British national. I checked it out, Gordon. Would uh, Julie have application forms? You leave my secretary alone. <laughs> Julie, bring me in the application forms, please. I want to keep them under lock and key. Britus. What sort of emergency, Cully? Welcome home, Gordon. One moment, my darling, please. Michael, what are you doing here? Oh, I just 
drop by. Now, I don't know why you're bothering, because no one's going to apply. Uh, Colin, why exactly would a builder want to set fire to his own hair? <laughs> oh, I saw you in the restaurant last night. What? Well, I was helping out in the kitchens. That's why you got an extra oyster. <laughs> Sorry. I'm always doing that. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll deal with it, Colin. <sighs> Sorry, my darling. What's this about restaurants? Sorry? I thought you were in Manchester with your mother. Yes, I came back early. For dinner. Dinner? That's nice. Who with? She had dinner with me, Gordon. You? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You had dinner with him? Just the two of you? Well, obviously not just the two of us, Gordon. It was no? a whole bunch of us. Yeah, we were celebrating Carol's birthday. Carol's birthday and I missed it. That's why Helen wanted to be there, to represent you. Yes, yes, that's right. I went over to say happy birthday from all of us. All right, my darling, we'll talk about it later. I've got an emergency to deal with. <laughs> Michael, that was brilliant. I don't know how to thank you. Hey, Helen, I've been there, you know. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Richard. Well, never mind. Oh, I should have realised, you know, there you were, that lawyer, champagne, oysters. Oh, it's wonderful. I do oh, not believe it. You sacrificed a precious evening with your mother so that management could be represented at Carol's birthday. You are a ministering angel, my sweet. <laughs> I had that about Gordon. He, he really trusts me. <laughs> so, you're telling me this man picked up his comb... This comb, Mr Bittas, <laughs> seems ordinary enough. ...and his hair caught fire. So, why would it set his hair on fire? Well, it's a mystery, isn't it? Right, here's what you do, Colin. Give him an aspirin. <laughs> if that doesn't work, you'll have to send him home. Will call, Mr Bittas. Now, <clears throat> about this party last night... Party? Carol's birthday party. Did anyone remember to give her a present? Present? I wish you'd stop repeating everything I say. I don't know anything about a party. You don't know anything about a party? Nobody told me anything. Nobody told you anything? Uh... Would you mind waiting, please? I'm trying to get some sense on my deputy manager. Hey, Councillor Druggett called. He wants to know about Brussels and are you definitely leaving? Right, I'd better deal with it. Just make sure he knows we're not liable. One that set fire to his head. <laughs> Did you know about this party? What? Mr. Britters told me that Carol had a birthday party last night. Oh, God. Did he ask if you were there? Yes. Well, what did you say? What could I say? I said no. Were many members of staff not invited? Oh, crikey. We're not ready for this. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Was I the only one? <laughs> Sorry, Dermot. You want something from your lunchbox? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Party. What? Mr. Britters, he's been asking Colin about the party. Oh, Lord, what do we do now? It's all right, it's all right, as long as we all say the same thing. We just have to make sure that everybody knows the story. Okay. Listen, can you two say you were at a party last night? A party? Why? Well, Michael's told Britters that we were all celebrating Carol's birthday at the Trocadero. So if he asks, you were there, okay? Yes, fine. It's not that important, but it would help. And you'll say Gavin was the one who organised it. Should be a few brownie points there, eh? Well, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Why not? I'd rather not say I was there when... Well, I wasn't, was I? Well, none of us were there, Gavin. That's the whole point. It's made up. Well, I'd prefer not to have to tell a lie. Oh, come on, Gavin. Oh, it doesn't matter, as long as we get enough of the others. I could bring Edward. What? As a matter of fact, I'd feel happier if he came. I'm actually quite a shy person. Linda! <laughs> oh, let her bring him. The important thing now is to tell everyone else. <laughs> oh, except Colin, because he'd always said he didn't know anything about it. Right. So it was the Trocadero. We got there just after eight, back just after midnight, and everyone had a wonderful time. Right. Well, I'll tell Carol. Thanks, Julie. I could do the pool in the changing rooms. And I'll catch anyone who comes in here. I'll phone Edward. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if it's all worth it, you know, it's all the lies, the deception, the anxiety, just for a few moments of illicit pleasure. Yes. I think it is. <laughs> Looks like some of us rather overindulged last night, Carol. Sorry, Miss Chris. Good party, eh? At the restaurant, your birthday. Oh, yes, that. We went to the Trocadero, got there about eight, left just before midnight and all thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. I have no wish to spoil a festive occasion, Carol, but when an evening's enjoyment affects our performance at work the following day, I'll get Julie to drop down my pamphlet on alcohol abuse, all right? <laughs> a word, please. 
Now, you were at this party last night, were you? I certainly was, Miss Brutus. We all went to the Trocadero, got there about eight. <laughs> yes, I know that, Linda. What concerns me is Carol's presence. I take it she did get one, didn't she? Oh, yes. And what was it? Um, I'm afraid Edward and I didn't see. No? It was in its little box by then. Right, so who organised it? Or oh, was it Gavin? Was it Tim? Tim. It... Tim? Yes. Right, get Tim to come to my office, please, will you? Yes, Mr. Bridget. <laughs> Tim, Mr. Brittas wants to see you in his office and he wants to know about the present. What present? Carol's birthday present. I told him you organised it and I didn't know what it was. Sorry. I'm really sorry, Tim. It's OK. We just have to decide what the present was. How about towels? There's not much of a present. Couldn't we get to something a bit more personal? Jewellery or... It's towels. So I organised the collection and we gave her some bath towels. I can handle that. Well, Edward and I are giving jewellery. <laughs> you still here? I just need an application form. Look, I've told you there's no point in discussing it. I'm not having a proven adulterer wearing the logo and uniform of this leisure centre. I'll level with you, Gordon. I need this job. Oh, I thought you had a wife to live off. Not to mention a father in Chicago worth millions. Billions, Gordon. But none of, it, none of it is mine unless Laura has a child. And at the moment, it looks like she doesn't want one. Well, can you blame her? You're not exactly the world's most trustworthy of husbands, are you? Well, that's exactly why I need this job. I need to do something drastic to prove to Laura that I've changed. And, well, frankly, wearing shorts to work is about as drastic as I can get. <laughs> I need to show her I'm serious, Gordon. Can you understand that? Well, I suppose I can. And then you see why I need the job. Yes. So do I get it? No. <laughs> this is a racist thing, right? What? You're discriminating against my ethnic background. It's the Irish grandparents. Your grandparents are completely irrelevant, Farrell. I wonder if the Equal Opportunities Board will see it that way. <laughs> Sit down, Farrell. <laughs> 243 questions, no blanks allowed. Great. Can I take a pen? Uh, uh. <clears throat> sign here, please. Do I have to sign for this pen? Just write your name, Farrell. You may now have access to Leisure Centre property. You wanted to see me, Mr. Riddles? Ah, oh, Timothy, yes, it concerns Carol's present that you organised. Oh, yes, we went for the bath towels in the end. Yes. Would anyone mind if I made a contribution? You want to give me money? It's a question of staff morale, Tim. Now, how much did it cost? Ah, uh, uh, £55. <laughs> Sounds rather expensive. Well, there were four. Big ones. And how many of you were there? Oh, let me just count round the table. Um, two, four... There were 16 si altogether, Tim. So there were. 16. And how many of those were members of staff? What? It's just I need to know the number, Tim, so that I can take the £55 and divide it by that number, plus one, myself, so I can work out my contribution and then determine what fraction of that I need to reimburse the others with. Yes. Unless, of course, you took contributions from people who weren't at the party, like Laura, Gavin... Why shouldn't Gavin have been at the party? Well, how could he be? It's Monday night. He's not still keeping it a secret, is he, Tim? He goes to his mother's. Gavin came to me some weeks ago, Tim, and asked for advice about how he could scale the ladders of promotion. And I sent him on a management course. A what? He did extremely well. Came fifth overall in the term exams. You might tell him that. I certainly will. <laughs> It's funny how the smell always lingers, isn't it? Right? In kitchens, it's been a vegetarian. You always recognise the smell of cooked meat. <laughs> My word, that is rather high. What is it? 109. Has he been out in the sun at all? Oh, down in the cellar. <clears throat> I'll just check his heart. <laughs> Don't worry, son, this might be a little bit chilly. Now, this is where everyone was sitting. 
eating, and this is what we all ate. We've put down what people are wearing and one or two funny things mm. that they said. OK, right. <laughs> oh, goodness, Colin. Is there anything I can do? Please don't trouble yourself. You'll doubtless be needing your rest after the party. Oh, thank you. Linda told me what a success it had all been. Oh, yes, it was wonderful, Colin. They gave me towels. Everyone was there. Not <laughs> quite everyone, Carol. No. Or didn't you notice? Oh, Colin, you weren't there. What happened? I was not invited. <laughs> Colin, I'm so sorry. As it happens, I had plenty to do last evening. But it might have been nice to have been asked. Sure, is it serious? Just heat stroke, we think, Laura. I'm dealing with it. Do you want some help? No, thank you, Laura. I'd rather be on my own. I might as well get used to it. <laughs> What's up with him? Oh, it's all my fault, Laura. I didn't invite Colin to my party last night. You had a party? Yes, we went to the Trocadero. <laughs> was there. It was my birthday. Why didn't you invite him? I've no idea. I had everyone else. Michael, Tim, Julie, Patrick. Michael? What? My Michael? Oh, yes. He sat two places away on my right. He had the veal. You didn't tell me. Oh, no, I don't believe it. You weren't there either. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I didn't invite you. I haven't invited Colin. No, no, it's all right. It's all right, Carol. I was in London. No, I just wonder why he didn't mention it. Oh, well, he'll probably explain it himself when he comes downstairs. He's here? Yes, he wanted to see Miss Briss. I think I'll just pop upstairs and see if everything's all right. <laughs> Although, with this bomb business, Councillor, I'm beginning to wonder if I should even think about leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Europe's need is the greater. That's a very noble thought, Mr Druggett. About five weeks, if all goes well. Let's hope so, yes. One last thing, Councillor. I've worked out an estimate for the building repairs. Well, it pans out round about ballpark figure of £400,000. <laughs> Councillor? Mr Duggett? <laughs> <laughs> Laura, how are things? I wondered if you knew we just lost a builder. Another? What happened to this one? Colin reckoned it was some sort of heat stroke. I'd take it with a pinch of salt if I were you, Laura. We've already had one go home saying you've been burnt on the crotch by his lunchbox. <laughs> you want me to check what's happening? Why is it a keep out, I think, Laura? These people are usually very touchy in my experience. Down tools if you so much as talk to them. I promise the good council will keep away. Anyway, how was London? Gordon, I'm a little puzzled by question 98. I... Oh, Laura, you're back. Yes. How was London? Fine, thank you. How was the party? How was it? I hear you had the veal. You weren't there either, were you, Laura? Look, if you'd like to make a contribution to the present, I can recalculate the figures. You got her a present? Yes. What was it? Unfortunately, I was sitting around the corner. I didn't get to see it. They gave her towels, Laura. Rather a successful do, by all accounts. You and I rather missed out. Yes, I think we possibly did. What are you doing here, Michael? Could I explain that a little later? I look forward to it. <laughs> I was going to tell you. Oh, yes. I was. I know how you feel about management. Too right I do. Do you want to end up like Britus? Oh, well, at least he's got somewhere with his life. At least he's done something. You call that good? I just don't want to spend the rest of my life as some commoner garden pool attendant. Oh, but being commoner garden's OK for me, is it? I didn't say that. No, you didn't have to. Look, if you don't change direction, you wind up where you're going. God, you've been listening to him as well, haven't you? <laughs> Look, I know what all this is about. Just because I didn't go to public school. Look, it's got nothing to do with public school. Look, Tim... Don't touch me! <laughs> I'm not going to argue about this. I've got a babbins in class. Look at this. We've bought a tie. Put that back. We're jumping the gun a bit, aren't we? Put it back. Hello, what are these? Leadership in modern management. Mobilising resources in the leisure industry. And finally, say hello to success. <laughs> have you been reading these? There's just a few books from the library, that's all. Ex Libris, Gordon Brittus. Remember, Gavin, my door is always open to a fellow worker for the dream. NB. <laughs> Please return by 9.30 Monday. Look, be careful with that. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, chapter three. If you can dream it, you can do it. Give that back. No, no, I want to be a fellow dreamer. But give that to me. <laughs> give that to Ah, oh, young love. <laughs> well, you think we ought to stop them or something? No, let's stay and watch. <laughs> I know some of you feel that these unexplained burnings are something more than just bad luck. <laughs> it may be possible that we've disturbed an ancient burial site. 
So my suggestion is, we wait here until the exorcist arrives, and then we'll know that there'll be no more shocks and surprises. last night. Could I ask a few questions? Questions? Yes, just one or two things I'd like to get clear. Certainly, Laura. If you'd just excuse me a moment. <laughs> Never mind. Linda, do you know who organised his party last night? Nobody, really. Nobody? No, well, there wasn't really a party, you see. We just had to say there was. And whose idea was that? Oh, Michael's. Did he say why? Don't think so. Probably covering up for something. You know what Michael's like. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to kill each other. Sorry, Carol, I'm going to need that. Sorry, Gavin, I have to be firm with you. What's going on? He lied. All I did was go to an evening class. He lied about it. Everybody tells lies sometimes. You have to. Not to me. No, no, I think Gavin's got a point. What? Well, I've been thinking a lot about this recently, and I don't see how you can not lies in a relationship. I mean, if everyone told their partner everything, most relationships wouldn't last ten minutes. We'd all be getting divorced and... and... Oh, no, right, all those who attended Carol's party, up to my office now, please. Chop, chop. Helen, I thought you were at the party. Oh, I didn't think you'd... I didn't think you'd... you'd... My suspicions were first aroused by this present you all apparently gave Carol. Such a generous gift, if I could thank you all once a again. A present which Linda <laughs> earlier described as being wrapped in a small box, but which later turned out to be four bath towels. Yes, I think I can explain that. Perhaps you could also explain, Timothy, why Michael Farrell was unable to see the present because he was seated round a corner out of sight, when, according to you, everyone was seated at a circular table. Yes, I think I can see the misunderstanding. Save your breath, Tim. I've phoned the restaurant. Oh, God. It's not going to work, you know. What? This attempt to convince me that there was no party. <laughs> but I have no need to feel humiliated and hurt. I appreciate your efforts, Mr. Britus. Sit down, Colin. I feel in the circumstances I have no alternative but to tender my resignation. One more squeak out of you and you're fired, Colin. Great, Mr. Britus. <laughs> Now, the other interesting point the manager mentioned was a couple who booked in under the name of Smith. One was a tall, good-looking man with dark, wavy hair. The other he described as a fluffy blonde who talked too much and spilt a lot of wine down her front. <laughs> You've all been lying to me. Except me. Not now, Gabby. <laughs> and the one who started all the lies was you, Helen Brittus. <laughs> Now, the interesting question is, why would my wife, who we all know would never do a dishonest deed in her life, suddenly do something like this? I think the answer is bound up with a mystery man in the restaurant, tall, good-looking, with dark, wavy hair. Who do we know who fits that description? I think we do. It was Farrell, wasn't it? Who? Michael T. Farrell III. Michael? The same. Of course, he's tall, good-looking. With dark, wavy hair. Who else could it be? Um, yes, Julie? I just wondered if you had any idea who the woman was. That we shall probably never know, but in the final analysis, <laughs> that is not important. What matters... So I'm completely innocent! Of course you are, my <laughs> darling. What else could you be? So it's all sorted out, then? Not quite. I still want to know why my staff and my wife have been lying to me. And I think the answer is just outside this door. Mr Farrell, would you like to step this way, please? Almost finished, Gordon. Just 33 more to go. <laughs> Something going on? Something has been going on, as you put it. I'm afraid your dabblings in the honey pot have finally come home to roost. Oh. Michael T. Farrell III, I put it to you. This whole business of Carol's birthday party in the Trocadero restaurant is nothing more than an attempt to cover up the truth. That you were there in the restaurant accompanied by a lady with whom you were having a secret affair. A fact you were understandably desperate to keep from your wife, Laura. <laughs> what have you got to say for yourself, Mr. Farrell? 
What can I say, Gordon? You got me. I can't believe it, Michael. No, no, it's true, every word of no, it. No, 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 I didn't mean the Miss Marple bit. You applied for a job. Oh, that, well, there's not much hope of me getting that now. But you applied. They can't take that away from you. We'll get this framed. Thanks. Number 87. Apart from potential for spiritual and physical growth, analysing questions 15 through 67, <laughs> what would be your main satisfaction in coming to work at Whitby Newtown Leisure? I'd like to spend more time with my wife. Is that true? Kind of. <laughs> well, I think that could be happening soon anyway. I'm afraid I wasn't that honest about my trip to London, either. No? I was actually seeing our old family doctor, and he was very... positive. Positive? <laughs> does, does, does this mean that... <laughs> Say hello to Barney. Hello, Barney. You're going to be one rich bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my darling. Rather longer than two minutes, wasn't it? Never mind, Gordon. I had to call the contractors to complain about the builders. Have you seen them? <laughs> I've been sitting in that van like statues for three hours now. Pretty depressing. Oh, Gordon, isn't it a lovely day? Is it? Look, over there. She trusts him completely, doesn't she? If only she knew. Well. Someone ought to tell her. Perhaps I'll pop round there myself this evening on some pretext. I don't think I would, Gordon. No? Well, I mean, what good would it do? Well, it would doubtless mean the breakup of her marriage and very possibly destroy her faith in human nature. But at least she'd know where she stood. <laughs> That's an awful shame. Well, it's not that important. Not important? He's been unfaithful, Helen. Yes, but I think with some people, in some cases, that sort of thing doesn't mean as much as you'd think. But she loves him, and he doesn't deserve it. Perhaps that's when you need it most, when you don't deserve it. <laughs> Helen Brittus, you've gone and done it again. What? I think I know your every move, and suddenly you go and surprise me all over again. You've been thinking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I won't tell her. His secret is safe with me. I think it's best. Yeah, come on. <laughs>